Well, hey, welcome back to Tadlock's Tool Shed, where we're solving the world's little problems one at a time. And today's little problem that's facing me is uh, actually a request. So I've got a command performance. It's how to change a tire. And uh, I'm not actually going to change it, but I am going to take it off and I'm going to put it back on so that you can see exactly how to change a tire. And so what do we do when we've got a flat tire like this? First things first, we make sure that the park brake is set. So I'm going to go up here. Take a look. Yes, my park brake is set. <clears throat> and I'm never, ever, ever going to trust that park brake. Because park brakes fail. Park brakes don't work from the beginning. Um, so we're not going to pretend that that park brake works. We're just going to set it. But hopefully it works. What we are going to do, assuming that that park brake doesn't work, is we're going to come back here and we're going to chop the tire. And in my case, I've got a piece of firewood here. If you're out on the road, you you know, you might have something in the back of your pickup. You might have a four by four. You might find a rock alongside the road or a piece of a log. Uh, my best friend one time pulled off his cowboy boot and stuck his heel underneath the back of, the, of his pickup and went up and changed the front tire with one boot on. Uh, so it's, it's not stupid if it works, I guess. So, Next thing, we're going to come up here. I've got my, my hardware out. And by the way, most of this stuff you'll find in the back of your car. Um, underneath the trunk, might be a, a panel at the bottom of the trunk. You lift it up and the stuff's there. On some of your pickups or some of your SUVs, things can be everywhere. They can be inside panels on the back end. Usually they are on SUV, old SUVs and minivans. Pickups a lot of times will have your jack handle up underneath the hood and may have other stuff and You might have a locking wheel lug and that locking wheel lug key is usually in your glove compartment and those are to make are for To prevent theft of your of your wheels uh, Don't see lots and lots of that in the US in the US unless you Have very fancy aftermarket wheels Or a very fancy car now we're gonna start, we're gonna take our lug wrench. We're gonna turn these. I'm turning them one at a time. That's just a cap, just a cap on the nut. Makes it look pretty. We're gonna come, we're gonna turn these about one full turn. Now that might be right, that might be wrong, but I'm the one teaching it, so one turn. Just so they're nice and loose. And then we come down here to the jack. And this is very important. This is just a little scissor jack, which is typical of what you find in most vehicles today. And they just screw up and screw down with this little screw here. But if you look in the top, you see this, this little hump right here, right in the middle. And if you go underneath the car, right here, you know if you can see it, that little hump jives with this little divot that's right here. Okay? You have a place where your two body panels come together there, so it's, it's double thickness of steel, it's spot welded, it's very sturdy. Doesn't necessarily look like it, but it is. And that is where that jack goes. Get it in there nice and straight. Now, something to think about here, if you're, if you're jacking it up, is what kind of ground you're on. Are you on concrete like I am, pavement, good hard packed uh, gravel road maybe? Or some place where it's rain, some place that's swampy, something that's maybe soft or softer than what you thought it was. You need to think about that before you jack it up because it will jack up in the air on soft ground and then sometimes start sinking on you. Uh, that can be that can be terribly dangerous. And uh, so what you do to remedy that, if you have a little plate of steel maybe, uh, Something you can stick under there, a little 12 by 12 piece of plywood, anything that disperses the weight of the car 
on soft ground will will make a difference or pull it to some place where the ground is a little harder um, that's that's going to be a judgment call but sometimes they'll they'll start sinking in the ground and and uh, so it's very important to keep your body parts out from underneath this car at all times now you see my hook a little hook here that's another piece that is very common with today's vehicles it goes right in there got a little hole in the middle of my lug wrench here and i'm going to put it those two jive just like that and we're gonna crank it up cranking it clockwise up 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 if i can get the camera around on the other side move over here where you can see it rising up bring it off the ground now something that you should remember if you're doing this uh, is that your flat tire is flat so it's gonna be down on the ground a lot further so when you go to put a fully aired tire on there you're gonna need the tire or the car further in the air so remember that when you're jacking it up Jack it up just a little bit extra so you can get that fully inflated tire back on there. Man. Pull my lugs off. You want to keep track of those. Don't let them roll away. Used to be that everything had hubcaps so you could just stick them in the hubcap. Now there's a lot of stuff that just doesn't. Uh, but you can put them inside your, your wheel rim or something and put them in, put them in your hat. Uh, just want to keep track of them. Uh, if you should have one roll underneath the car, heaven forbid, while you're doing this. Again, don't go under that car for anything. Don't stick your legs under there. Don't stick your arms under there. If you can't get it out with a stick or something, there's a little hack that I've got for you. And that is that these wheels will uh, will stay on with just four lugs. Missing one lug ain't gonna matter that much for just a minute. So we got it off there, right? If you're got list back to the missing wheel lug, put on put on your four lugs, right? Get them good and tight. Drop it off your jack. Drive the car forward 10 feet. Go out, pick up your other lug, come around, put it back on. You can do that. Uh, like I said, four lugs will hold it. This is only a temporary fix anyway. <laughs> Which brings me to my next point. My little lug wrench here is not a torque wrench. This is for putting them on and taking them off and getting you out of a out of a mess in the middle of the night or in a... Uh, I don't know, rainstorm or whatever it is that you happen to run into because whenever your tire goes flat isn't going to be convenient. That's that's just rule of thumb. It's never going to be convenient. Um, these really need to be torqued. And to do that, you need a torque wrench. So what preferably the idea is, is for you to get your tire on and take your car to a garage and get somebody to torque your, your wheel lugs properly. And if you go to take your car to a garage where they just take an impact and zip them on, uh, 
This little car only takes about 80 foot pounds of torque. And they're slapping it on in a, in a circle with 140 foot pounds. What's gonna end up happening is it's gonna warp your rotor. Uh, it's gonna cause premature wear to your brake pads, to your rotor. It's gonna cause all kinds of drivability problems. And we used to laugh about those kind of things back in the day, but that was because our wheels were giant. They were made out of steel and it just kind of didn't matter. With the new stuff, you can't do that. They, they need to be torqued properly. And uh, fortunately for everybody involved, I've got a torque wrench and I'll torque these after I get it all, all put on, put back together. I'm gonna move over this way. So take out the plastic with my right hand. Okay. So I'm going to put on. All these wheel lugs with my fingers. Right here. Take it. I'm going to tighten these up. There's five of them. We're just going to use a star pattern and you would use the same if it was like an eight eight uh, lug or or anything you want to zip around them so in this case started here go here 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 or here 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 um doesn't matter which one you start with you can start over here just as long as you go in a star pattern like I'm talking about. Then what I like to do, once I get them down, get them sort of tight. Is just give them a, Let's go around a circle here and just give them a little, little something, just to make sure that they're that they're there. Now we're gonna take her down off the jack, right? So counterclockwise to the ground. Tightness here. I'm gonna use my foot. You can use your foot to take them off too. I mean, if you're if you weigh 80 pounds, you may need to do that. Got out of sync, didn't I? So we tried this again. There. 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 So there you go, down, on, down and dirty on how to 
change your tire the way that I was taught to do it, please remember, do not put any of your body parts underneath the vehicle when it's up on the jack. It's a, it can end up tragically. <coughs> and for now, I'm out.